Hi, everyone, and thank you for registering for the 2020 IPF Together in Providence, Rhode Island, August 18th through the 21st. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use our WinMatch feature this year to set up different appointments. The first thing you're going to need is our invitation to schedule appointments. The email's going to look similar to the one I have pulled up here, and you're going to start by clicking the Schedule Appointments button. Once you click that button, it's going to take you to your calendar for the event. As you can see here, I have some sessions that I've said that I'm interested in, as well as some events like member reception, creams and cocktails, and scotch and champagne that I'm interested in attending and I RSVP'd for on my registration. So there are two different ways to schedule an appointment. One is the best way to use it is if you know who you want to meet with and you know that they're attending an event. To do that, you're going to go over here and hit create an appointment. Here you want to make sure that the appointment type is considered win match. You're going to add the attendee. You want to make sure that you spell their name correctly. You also want to be sure that you put enough characters in that you get a short list because we do have a lot of attendees registered for the IPF. So you're going to click the attendee that you want to schedule a meeting for and at the bottom you're going to click add one attendee. The next thing you need to do is choose the time and location. This is going to compare both of our schedules and show if we're both available. It's also going to show you the rooms and if there's tables available. So we have a four o'clock session of a member uh, reception. So let's say we're going to do three to three to 45 and the subject will be final walkthrough. You can make it whatever you want. You have the, abil the ability to add a description. If there is a conflict with something on your schedule, it will show down here below private note. After you're finished typing in all the information that you want to do, you hit send appointment invitation. This is going to send an appointment request to the attendee, and they then have the ability to approve or deny it. Once that appointment is approved, this, the lines around the box will no longer be dashed. They will be solid fill. The other thing you can do from this create an appointment button is you can do a block off time. Let's say every morning we have a staff meeting, which is accurate, at 6 o'clock until 7 a.m. I have the ability to write staff meeting and block off my calendar. This allows no one else to propose a meeting time with me. It tells them I'm unavailable. And as you can see, this is what your meeting would look like after it's confirmed. It's solid and the blue is a little bit brighter. The other way to schedule a meeting is by going through our directory. You'll click here, and this will take you to just a list of names. You could scroll all the way through it, but if there, you can also search by name, email, company, or title. So if you wanted to schedule a meeting with someone from our staff, you could go here, type in business network, and it's loading. Um, and then you can see we have 16 different people registered. You can have the ability to scroll through the list. So let's say I needed to schedule an appointment with Elizabeth Verminsky. You're going to click request an appointment and it's going to take you to the same screen. The only difference here is you cannot just block your schedule. So you're going to make a meeting. You have your attendee already. You'll choose a time and location that works for both of you. Again, you can scroll through any of the days that we have available. Um, and then you're going to finish filling it out and again send the appointment invitation. For the most part, it's fairly simple this year. The program's a lot easier than the one that we had last year. The only time that I think anyone would get issues is if they had opted out of win match registration when they registered for the IPF. So I'm going to walk you through the different ways to check that. So I'm going to close out of this. So the other thing then for that that you would need is you would need your registration confirmation number. So here it just, it tells me thank you for registering and here's my confirmation number. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then there's a link here at the bottom that'll take you straight to your registration. However, if you don't have this email, I'm gonna show you how to get it. So you would start by opening up our um, IPF webpage here and you can go to click the register button you can select, select member or non-member, it doesn't matter in this case, because you're gonna hit register, it's gonna take you to this web page that's loading, and you're just gonna hit cancel. As you cancel, it's gonna take you to our landing page, and you're gonna click already registered. Here, if you have your confirmation, the link that is in that email will take you straight to this page. If you don't, you click the forgot your confirmation, and it'll give you your email, you'll, or you enter your email address that you use to register, and it will resend the email. So I do have mine here, so let me 
put in my information. I'm just going to copy and paste the confirmation number and hit submit. It does take a minute to load because there are a lot of questions on these screens. So first thing it's going to do is it's just going to show you a copy of your registration summary. Um, as you can see, these are the sessions I'm interested in. There's also, um, you know, anything I RSVP'd for. So you're going to hit modify registration at the bottom. And here as it's loading, it'll show you your registration type. And then on the next screen, this is where all your personal information is. So the one thing that you'll want to make sure is, do you want to be opted out of WinMatch? No one will be able to collect, uh, sorry, no one will be able to contact you from WinMatch meetings if you click this yes button here. Um, so you go ahead and click that if you do not want to participate, or you want to make sure it's unclicked if you do want to participate. The other thing on this page that I do recommend that you do is I, up, I recommend that you upload a profile image. That'll make it easier for other attendees to find you at the conference. It will be very crowded, so it makes it simpler to have a, a picture to go by. So after all this, you do have to go through the remainder of your registration. Um, and then it'll show you here. These are, you know, any things that you, any sessions that you may choose to pick. You can add them here um, on attending any of these side events. And then you'll get your registration summary. It'll total up your price for you. If you add in anything, you'll have a total. But if not, you're just going to hit submit at the end. It's going to process and it's going to take you back out. That's going to be how you can check to see if you've opted out. Now, if you are still having issues and you are opted in, I encourage you to email me. As you can see here on the screen, my email address is brandy at offshorewindus.org, and I'll be happy to take a look at the issues that you're having and see what I can do to help you. Please feel free to reach out with any questions, and we're excited to see you all in August.